Back when we started Calling All Ports, we were relative newcomers to cruise travel. Uh, though we described ourselves as cruise omnivores, interested in taking on every cruise travel experience imaginable. And true to that goal, we've now sailed on every size of cruise ship, from small ships carrying only a couple hundred passengers, all the way up to mega ships with passenger capacities exceeding 4,000. We've cruised with mainstream cruise lines and ultra luxury brands and everything in between. We've had wonderful experiences on every single one of our journeys, uh, even if some have been better than others, we've yet to take a cruise that we did not enjoy. Yeah, that's right. Every day on a cruise is a good day. However, as we sit and recollect the different cruises we've taken, seven in the past year alone, there's one line Andrew and I keep coming back to, and that's Holland America Line. Their ships, their crew, the food, the entertainment, the value, there's a lot to love about Holland America. So whether you've never sailed with Holland America before or you're one of their five-star mariners, in this video, let us share with you the five reasons why we love Holland America Line and why we think you should too. As we begin, let's be clear. We are not sponsored in any way by Holland America. We're independent travelers. We spend our own money on our cruises, just like you. And we have a little bit of experience though. We sailed with Holland America twice last year in Alaska and the Caribbean. And we've got three more cruises with Holland America booked in the year ahead, including one to Canada and New England in less than two months. So we keep coming back to the cruise line for good reason, and we simply want to share our experiences and our opinions, and we hope this video might help you plan your own future cruise journeys. And so with that said... So reason number one, the size of Holland America ships. There are 11 ships in Holland America fleet, ranging from the smallest, Volendam and Zandam, that both carry about 1,400 passengers, to the largest and newest pinnacle class ships, the Koningsdam, New Staten Dam, and Rotterdam, all which carry around uh, 2,600 passengers. Um, I've heard Holland America refer to their fleet as spacious mid-sized ships, and that's an accurate description. Um, 1,400 to 2,600 passenger capacities put them squarely in the midship size or mid-sized ship category, uh, with the pinnacle class ships even edging into large ship territory. Yet these passenger counts are relatively minuscule compared to the mega ships recently rolled out, um, you know, like Royal Caribbean's behemoth icon of the seas with 70, sorry, 7,600 passengers, or Carnival's massive Jubilee with 6,500 passengers. Those kind of passenger numbers are mind boggling. And let's just say you're not going to find us on those ships anytime soon. Right, Holland America's ships are still quite a bit bigger than what you'll find with higher end luxury and ultra luxury lines, you know, whose largest ships still tend to keep guests, uh, you know, the guests on board under about a thousand. Uh, for instance, Regent Seven Seas, their newest ship Grandeur has 746 passengers. MSC's Explorer Journeys luxury kind of offshoot has about 920 passengers. So even though Holland America's ships are sizable, they rarely feel cramped or crowded. The ship layouts are quite spacious. In fact, we feel that their slightly larger size tends to be an advantage. All their ships provide a nice assortment of public spaces and there's always something interesting to see or to do. There's sort of a Goldilocks just right thing happening with the sizing of Holland America's ships. Uh, not too small, not too big. Uh, you get the relaxed feel of a small mid-sized ship paired with the facilities and services of a larger ship. Uh, for instance, there are a large number of bars and restaurants. There's multiple entertainment venues, uh, bigger casinos and fitness centers. And sure, like the major, you know, like the larger mainstream ships, you still need to arrive at some venues early if you want a good seat for the performances, like at BB King's or Billboard On Board. They can get crowded at those peak evening times, and it might be overwhelming if you're trying to disembark the ship first thing at a port. Uh, those are perhaps the only times Holland America ship feels like a bigger NCL, Carnival, Royal Caribbean. Um, nevertheless, generally, the public areas aren't terribly crowded. And the ships aren't so big that you ever feel lost or that you don't have time enough um, to see everything on board or that you just get exhausted from walking from the top to the bottom of the ship. And 
Also, the smaller passenger capacity means you'll see many familiar faces day in and day out, while also meeting new people pretty much everywhere you go. And we like it both ways. Um, one strength of small ship cruising is that you get to make friends with fellow cruisers who you cross paths with, you know, paths with repeatedly. And yet we like the larger ship because you're seeing new faces all the time. So in terms of the social life on board, Holland America mid-sized ships give you the best of both worlds. Somewhat similarly, we've found that Holland America's midsize uh, leads to a more personalized service. There is a solid passenger to crew ratio. I believe it's about two to one, meaning you know one crew member for every two passengers, which is fairly actually average for the industry, though in our experience, we felt like the presence of the crew uh, you know uh, is is more than that suggests. The, the crew aren't as spread thin as they typically are on the large and, and the mega ships. Uh, you get the personal interaction that's more common of small cruise ships. Uh, on our past Holland America cruises, we've always seen our room attendants regularly, multiple times a day. They knew our names, they learned our preferences, they always had time to say hello and make chit chat. Uh, the same went for the dining room servers and bartenders. We'd see the same crew frequently and they learned what we liked, you know, from food and drink choices to favorite seating locations. So reason number two, um, it's distinctive how Holland America embraces and celebrates their Dutch heritage. Uh, similar to Scandinavian style, Dutch design incorporates a streamlined, clean flow. It sticks to a subdued yet warm color palette, and it dedicates space for large social gatherings. Holland America ships, especially the Pinnacle class ships, are beautiful and nicely embrace those Dutch design elements. Uh, the ships aren't glitzy, they aren't, you know, you're not going to find lots of extravagant ar architectural details with gold or marble or crystal, um, but that doesn't mean Holland America ships aren't, you know, elegant in their own right. It's just more subtle, restrained elegance with neutral colors inspired by nature and materials like glass and ceramic tile. One venue that shows off the uh, Dutch design principle um, of shared spaces is the Crow's Nest, uh, which is Holland America's observation lounge up on the top deck. Uh, most cruise lines have a large lounge at the front of the ship, yet there's something about Holland America's Crow's Nest where it feels especially open, inviting, and communal. It has a like cozy living room vibe, even though you know it's a massive space. It's just very warm and social. And it helps that they serve coffee drinks at the bar up here. Um, a lot of cruise lines only serve alcoholic drinks in their observation lounge bar. So, you know, throughout the morning and the afternoon, there's a real buzz to the place. Um, and it also doubles as their library and game room. So rather than tuck these venues away in separate areas and closed off rooms like the majority of cruise lines do, Holland America brings them out in the open. So there are always people dotted around Crow's Nest, reading a book and playing cards or board game. And these activities become conversation pieces. And there's always lots of chatting and laughing and good vibes all around. We also love how Holland America incorporates Dutch gastronomy into their sailings too. So coffee time is big in the Netherlands. The, you know, no surprise really there since the Dutch are responsible for bringing coffee from Indonesia to Europe you know, centuries ago and, and turning it into a staple beverage here in the global north. Uh, the Dutch, you know, take multiple coffee breaks throughout the day, usually paired with cake and cookies and other pastries and goodies. Uh, on the Pinnacle class ships, passengers are treated to the Grand Dutch Cafe, which is a real treat. It's one of our favorite casual dining spots on any cruise line. Uh, and the food that's there is all included in the cruise fare. There's a mix of savory and sweet bites, including a number of Dutch specialties like bitter ballen, which are a kind of like a scotch egg with spiced chopped meat or kind of a meat puree and then rolled and deep fried. Uh, panacote? Pa pa panacoken. Panacoken, which is a type of pancake with toppings and bashi ball, which is basically a giant profiterole filled with cream and covered in chocolate. The thing's like enormous. We stop by the cafe every day for a delicious coffee and a tasty treat. They serve beer in the afternoon too. Uh, it's not the healthiest eating though, so maybe for us it's a it's a good thing the Dutch cafe is uh, you know limited to only the pinnacle class vessels. So you know the Koningsdam, Nieuwstadendam, Rotterdam. And uh, one other Dutch food tradition that Holland America embraces is split pea soup, 
which they serve during the Glacier Bay cruising day in Alaska, out on the bow and up on the crow's nest lounge. And Dutch split pea soup is thicker than most of the versions you'll come across here in the US. Um, it's a hearty winter dish. The Dutch traditionally serve it on New Year's Day. And it's great that the crew serve it out on the deck on Glacier Bay Day when lots of passengers like ourselves are up early, out in the cold, glued to the ship's railing, trying to get the best views of the stunning landscape. And the crew will bring cups of the split pea soup right to you so you don't have to lose your, you know, your coveted spot and it really warms you up. We only wish they had a pomme frite kiosk on the ship or what they call snack bar in the Netherlands, which are basically like little small eateries with different fast foods, uh, you know, a lot of it deep fried and, and some snack bars actually specialize entirely just in fries. Uh, and sure, you know, sh fries are Belgian in origin, but the Dutch love their, fr their fries too. And they're amazingly good and come with all sorts of sauces, including, you know, classic kind of mayonnaise, but also peanut sauce, curry sauce, cut up onions, uh, even apple sauce. Um, yeah. So yeah, really, really yum. And uh, so dear Holland America, you know, next time you build a new ship, if that ever happens, uh, add a snack bar. Yeah, and there are other special Dutch touches that you'll encounter on every Holland America itinerary. Every sailing we've been on, the cruise director has led a series of enrichment talks about the cruise line's storied history, uh, with lots of background on the Netherlands maritime heritage. And the Netherlands is a seafaring nation, and I surely don't need to tell you that they've been a leading sea power um, going back to the medieval times. However, probably the greatest Dutch-themed tradition aboard Holland America ships is the orange party. Uh, there's an orange party on board their sailing, um, every sailing, and it's a version of their white night or gala night, but it stands apart because of how much it makes a nod to the cruise line's Dutch heritage, um, orange being the color of the Dutch royal family, and passengers are encouraged to wear orange clothing and accessories, and they have special events around the ship with live music and dancing, and they'll pass around Dutch appetizers like bitterballen, as well as um, you know some free specialty cocktails. And if you're lucky, you'll even witness the ship's captain getting down on the dance floor. And so these small things like showcase Holland America's unique identity. So by the way, uh, since you're still watching, hopefully that means you're finding something valuable in this video. So please take a second to like this video or better yet, also leave a comment. Likes and comments let us know that we're on the right track and that we should keep making more videos like this one. And also please subscribe to Calling All Ports. We've got videos coming up soon about Oceania cruises, Viking River cruises, celebrity, Cunard, and a bunch more Holland America content too. So subscribe to stay up to date with all that and more cruise travel content too. So reason number three that we personally love Holland America is for the classic cruising experience. Uh, water slides and go-karts, you know, they have their place in the cruising world, sure. Uh, though we personally, we prefer what some might call a more classic or more traditional cruising experience with deck games and enrichment talks and open pool deck, a, a great big promenade, lar you know, large lounges for reading and games and other relaxing pastimes. And Holland America has all of these elements. We already talked about the crow's nest and how it has these, uh, you know, this sort of giant living room vibe with people chit-chatting and reading and playing games. You know, that to us is a really great example of classic cruise recreation. Uh, you know, taking it easy, gazing out at the open ocean, spending time with family and friends, enjoying oneself by entertaining oneself. Holland America simply offers a laid back cruising environment without a lot of the bells and whistles. So all the flashy, you know, amenities uh, that the big resort ships offer also tend to bring with them crowds and noise and frankly, stress to a degree. Uh, perhaps that's why Holland America's demographic has traditionally skewed a bit older, or at least that sort of seems to be the perception that, you know, Holland America is for old people. Uh, although it seems a lot of, you know, young cruisers are discovering that that stereotype is not true. Uh, and perhaps it's also that a lot of the younger people today are starting to really appreciate a more minimalist lifestyle, both in terms of needing less things, you know, fewer possessions, but also less programmed activities. 
and seeking out, you know, kind of fewer distractions. So embrace the simple things, embrace a slower pace, and so forth. Yeah, and personally, we love spending hours in the Crow's Nest Observation Lounge, whether we're playing Scrabble or just reading and sharing ideas as, as they strike us. And in the evening, there are a lot of great bars and lounges on board for a pre or post dinner drink and conversation. And we actually made a video about the bars on New Amsterdam. So if you want to check out that video, we'll include the link um, in the you know in the comments below. But honestly, one of our favorite things is the gorgeous promenade. Um, all of Holland America's ships feature wraparound promenade. Um, in fact, it's such a signature feature that every ship on the fleet has an aptly named promenade deck. It's usually deck three, um, I believe. And on the older ships, like the signature class vessels, the outdoor promenade is really nice and wide. And somewhat unfortunately, uh, the newer pinnacle class ships have a narrower promenade with like more bump outs and obstructions. But nevertheless, there's still a wraparound public walkway down near the water surface. And one of our favorite pastimes on Holland America ships is to simply stroll the promenade after each meal, take in the beautiful views and the fresh sea air and the sounds of the ship cutting through the waves. It's just one of those simple pleasures uh, that just makes you overall happier. Holland America cruises are focused on being with people you love and meeting new friends and having a wonderful, relaxing time. And, you know, we're totally on board for that. Pun intended. <laughs> So reason number four, we've touched on this a bit already when we talked about the Dutch specialties like bitter ballen and split pea soup. But another reason why we love Holland America is for the food. Um, we should point out that these reasons are in no particular order because if we were ranking them, then food would be number one because food is always a priority for us. Um, so Holland America is keenly aware of the importance of cuisine in the cruising experience and they seem to be paying more and more attention to the importance of dining in their marketing and branding. And Holland America has their culinary council, which is a group of celebrity chefs with different global backgrounds who advise the cruise line on their menus. And some of the culinary council members head up their own specialty dining restaurants, like David Burke, who directs Pinnacle Grill Steakhouse, the sushi master Andy Matsuda, who leads Nami Sushi and Tamarind, and Rudy Sodomin, who is Holland America's Culinary Council chairperson and who oversees the French seafood brasserie Rudy Sel de Mer. Um, other culinary council members include Top Chef winner Kristen Kish, um, who is now host of Top Chef, uh, Pacific Northwest Chef Ethan Stowell, French pastry chef and chocolatier Jacques Torres, uh, famous wine critic James Suckling, uh, who guides Holland America's wine list. And so every night in the main dining room, there's a special selection of dishes from one of the Culinary Council members. And the chefs all have very different styles and expertise. And since those specials change daily, uh, it means you're always getting something unique to sample. And we love Holland America's main dining room, which they simply call the dining room. Uh, we've always had great service in the MDR, both during fixed seating and open seating. Uh, and the overall variety and quality of the dishes is really quite excellent for what it is. Uh, you know, make no mistake, Holland America is not a luxury or ultra luxury line, and you're not going to get, you know, caviar or Kobe beef or Iberico ham or bluefin tuna or whole lobster or king crab, you know, at least not every night, uh, you know, whenever you want it. However, beyond those big ticket delicacies, the selection and quantity of cuisine offered here is, is really, really top notch. And actually you will see some of those finer ingredients pop up on the menu, you know, some nights. It's just, again, not every night, it'll just be maybe one time during your cruise, you'll get caviar on a dish or whatever. Um, but even in the MDR, you'll, you will get dishes like Dover Sole, filet mignon, beef wellington, uh, you know, lots of really, you know, uh, you know really uh, sort of fine cuisine. The specialty restaurants like the Steakhouse Pinnacle Grill and the Pan Asian Tamarind all offer elevated dining experiences as well, uh, each at a relatively reasonable upcharge. Uh, we've only had great experiences dining in Hall America's specialty restaurants, certainly uh, when you take into account the value you're getting with Holland America, you know, most people are only paying up maybe a couple hundred dollars 
per night per person. And of course that can vary, but it's generally fairly affordable. The food you receive is really quite exceptional. Yep, and the outstanding food doesn't stop at the main dining room or the extra pay venues. The casual dining options are excellent too. The buffet, which Holland America calls the Lido Marketplace, is one of the larger and more diverse options we've come across on any cruise line. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. And while they're not the only cruise line that does this, we really like that they reopen the buffet for some late night snacks too. Uh, we're both night owls and we're often up late at one of the shows and maybe we've had a few drinks at that point. And you know, you get that craving for some orange chicken or mac and cheese. And Holland America delivers with the late night buffet. God bless them. And we'll make a whole other video about the Lido Marketplace um, some, sometime in the future because there's just too much to say and we want to keep this video short. But put it simply, put simply, it offers a nice assortment of tasty bites from custom made salads to grill favorites, uh, your American style burgers and steaks and roasted meats and the like, to cook to order pastas and omelets and eggs and bennies in the morning to sushi and a great variety of Southeast Asian and Indian dishes in their distant land section. There's also an excellent bakery section too with a wide selection of breads and desserts. There are also a few fast food style eateries. Uh, we've already mentioned the greatness that is the Grand Dutch Cafe and New York pizza is quite, quite good and also open late night. And on the Pinnacle class ships, it has an expanded deli menu with Rubens and other classic New York City deli sandwiches but we can't forget to talk about Dive-In, which is Holland America's burger joint on the pool deck. And in our opinion, Dive-In serves some of the best burgers we've had on a cruise ship. They're prepared in the style of like a Shake Shack or a Smash Burger, a thin grill press patty on a soft uh, brioche bun, and some really interesting toppings uh, like Gouda cheese and crispy, uh, crispy fried onion strings and their signature Dive-In sauce. Uh, they offer a variety of vegetarian and lighter health-minded burger alternatives like chicken breast, mushroom burger, and even a naked salad only option. And they've got Nathan's hot dogs and really good fries too. Seriously, the food at Dive-In is phenomenal. So it's dangerous if you're trying to be health conscious, we need to limit ourselves to, you know, one or two Dive-In meals per cruise, uh, but phenomenal nonetheless. We also appreciate that Holland America line is showing a commitment to both bringing in high quality fresh ingredients and prioritizing environmental sustainability. So for instance, they've got the recently announced Global Fresh Fish program. Um, as many viewers probably know, Holland America has deep roots cruising in Alaska. And for a while now, they've worked to bring certified sustainable Alaskan seafood onto their ships. And now this new Global Fish program kind of expands that and builds a network of uh, ports, I think it's 60 ports, to source and serve a really wide variety, like more than 80 types of fish uh, on board all of its restaurants. Uh, and the, so the goal being to purchase locally sourced fish that then goes from port to plate in under 48 hours. Yeah. Um, celebrity chef and sushi master Masahiro, Masaharo Morimoto is now uh, Holland America's fresh fish ambassador. I love that title, by the way. Um, and he's curating regionally inspired seafood dishes and offer, offering a Morimoto by Sea pop-up restaurant experience uh, already on some ships. And uh, Holland America says that it'll be fleet-wide uh, within uh, within the year. So let's hope. Because um, personally, we really love Chef Morimoto. We've eaten at a number of his restaurants in the States. Uh, the chef's tasting menu at his flagship Morimoto restaurant in Philadelphia was one of the best meals that we have ever eaten. I mean, that was well, something like 15 years ago that we ate there, uh, but we still talk about it like probably at least once a month at yeah. least. It was really, really good. Uh, anyhow, we certainly hope we get to try the Morimoto pop-up dining experience on board a Holland America ship soon. And we're just really impressed with how Holland America has placed uh, increased attention on sustainable local ingredients, especially uh, with the kind of Alaska fish focus. Uh, and that the company cares about the environmental impact of cruising while also you know, not sacrificing quality ingredients. 
And now to reason number five, uh, we think you should consider Holland America for the music walk. Even if you've never cruised with Holland America, you've probably heard of the music walk before. It's a series of live uh, music venues on board the ships lined up together in a row on deck two, always on deck two, I believe and they alternate the evening set time so you can easily walk from one music venue to another. Uh, there are four branded music venues on the Holland America ships. B.B. Uh, King's Blues Club, uh, which features a full eight-piece band playing classic R&B hits. The Rolling Stone Lounge, named after Rolling Stone Magazine and playing pop rock hits from the 60s to the present with a heavy emphasis on 70s, 80s, and 90s material. Lincoln Center Stage, which has its partnership with Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts in New York City, and brings a classical music string quartet on board, and Billboard On Board, which is Holland America's take on the dueling pianos concept that a few other cruise lines have too. Not all of the ships have every one of these venues, but each ship had at least a couple. And I say were because there have been some recent changes, which we'll come back to in a moment. The Music Walk really sets Holland America apart from the other mid to large ship cruise lines in our minds. You know, we're personally not huge fans of the big Broadway style stage shows. You know, we enjoy them well enough, but Diana and I are definitely music people. We actually both worked in the music industry uh, previously. And so if you give us a choice uh, between a song and dance performance show and a live musical act, I think we'll pick the live music, uh, you know, almost every time. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that's just our personal taste and Holland America's music walk artists are like surprisingly good uh, You know before we went on our first Holland America cruise uh, We were honestly a bit skeptical like wondering like how good could they be? But literally the first night we saw the BB Kings band on board the New Amsterdam. Uh, we were floored uh, They were really really good and hands down, the B.B. King's Blues Club venue is our personal favorite. You know, the Rolling Stone bands are a lot of fun too, and the Lincoln Center String Quartet are terrific uh, musicians. The, the dueling pianos concept simply just isn't really kind of our cup of tea, though in our experience, they've always been great singers and great performers as well. Um, however, the B.B. King's musicians are just sort of out of the park, uh, and we know we're not alone in our fandom because every ship we've been on that uh, B.B. that B.B. King's Blues Club venue is, is jumping. The room's overflowing with people, uh, the dance floor is packed, people are singing along, and the band is always like really interactive and great about incorporating the audience into the show. Um, it's a it's a full eight piece band, like Diana said before, with a female and male vocalist, a guitarist, a bass player, keyboardist, drummer, and then some horns, a tenor sax and trumpet players. Uh, and they play a lot more than just the blues, by the way. Um, their set lists are filled with R&B, soul, and dance hits from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, actually, a lot of disco and funk. Uh, some classic rock and roll even from the likes of the Rolling Stones, The Doors, Santana, uh, and even a few contemporary hits from retro style kind of musicians, people like Bruno Mars, Pharrell Williams. Uh, most nights the BB Kings band will play three sets and we'll go out of our way to be there for each and every one. And we especially like the music walk on the newer class, uh, newer Pinnacle class ships since you get three or four distinct venues and you can really make a night of it. Uh, for instance, when we were on board the Koningsdam in Alaska last summer, we would go back and forth between uh, the Rolling Stone Rock Room and BB King's Blues Club for hours and hours, and we wouldn't make it back to our cabin until after midnight. And by the way, they used to call it the Rolling Stone Rock Room, though Holland America seems to have changed it to the Rolling Stone Lounge, oddly. And yeah, uh, that's one of the things we really like about Holland America's Music Walk. It keeps the ships vibrant and lively until late until the night. And personally, all around, we prefer the small to mid-sized ship experience um, for reasons we've already talked about earlier in this video. Yet we also like to stay up late and enjoy onboard entertainment until at least 11 or midnight. And unfortunately, a lot of the smaller cruise lines go to bed early. I mean, literally most scheduled entertainment stops by about 10 and the ship becomes a bit of a ghost town. So again, Holland America offers that like Goldilocks just right scenario where you get a fairly relaxed classic cruising experience without a lot of, you know, distracting bells and whistles. 
yet there's still some energy and amusement to be had, you know, well into the night if you want it. We need to end this video on somewhat of a downer note though, because sadly Holland America seems to be killing off the music walk experience or at least changing it significantly. And this honestly might be something that'll give us second thoughts about booking with Holland America in the future. Uh, we need to kind of wait and see, I guess, how this plays out in the months ahead. But about a year ago now, Holland America started pulling the Lincoln Center Stage venue from all of its ships. Uh, we were actually on the New Amsterdam sailing in March 2023 uh, that turned out to be the quartet's last performance on board that ship. Uh, it's actually something that we pointed out in our New Amsterdam ship tour video. They were pulling down all the Lincoln Center Stage signage as we were disembarking the ship. Uh, Holland America has reported that, that they're going to be revamping the Lincoln Center partnership and that the classical musicians are going to return uh, to the ships periodically. And instead of being in their own dedicated venue, they're going to play limited but more high profile concerts on the bigger world stage. Um, that transition seems to have been, ha have been slow to happen, uh, though we have heard some passengers say that the Lincoln Center performers have popped up on the world stage in recent months, at least on some of the ships, like the New, New Staten Dam, I believe, is one. Uh, hopefully that Lincoln Center partnership continues to kind of rebuild and expand. Um, but our even bigger concern is that the B.B. King's Blues Club venue appears to be disappearing from Holland America's ships. So, for instance, uh, on the New Amsterdam, the Blues Club was replaced by the Rolling Stone Rock Room or the Rolling Stone Lounge sometime in the past few months. Uh, and some cruisers in online forums have reported that the Blues Club on the New Staten Dam has been sitting empty. Uh, certainly, if you yourself have witnessed any of these music walk changes on board Holland America's ships recently, uh, please do let us know in the comments below. Uh, and ultimately, we've heard unconfirmed rumors that the contract with the BB Kings organization was not renewed, which would be a real shame if that's true. Um, basically, that leaves only Rolling Stone and Billboard on board, which, uh, you know, as good as they may be, uh, that is not much of a music walk, just two venues, you know, is it? Uh, what's going on, Holland America Line? So thanks for joining us for these five reasons why we love Holland America, and we think you should too. There are certainly more than five things we could share. So have you cruised with Holland America Line? Is there another reason why you love the cruise line? Uh, let us know in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all Calling All Ports content. Thanks again for watching and we'll be seeing you.